Okay guys, I am Mike once again, back for part two, chapter two. So this is the next chapter called The Spectacle of the Scaffold. Now here, he provocatively outlines the way torture was not perceived as a state-sanctioned indulgence of violence against the citizen, but instead torture was a product of an overall turn towards an emerging rationality. Now, torture and the amount of intensity behind the torture was measured and calculated. And public torture was meant to be uh, a ceremonial aspect of justice. We have to keep this in mind as Foucault pretty much outlines the rationality of the spectacle of this torture ceremony and political ritual. Uh, in a sense, the entire chapter is about this. So look for moments of rationality. Look for glimmers of rationality at all times when you're reading this. Now, a few, a few years ago, uh, when I first read this chapter, it was really difficult for me because I kept thinking, oh, what am I reading about? This is so long and so detailed and stories and story after story, punishment after punishment, torture, torture, this. Um, and he just keeps going and going. Uh, I forget what I was reading about. But if you're constantly looking for these glimmers of rationality at all times while you're reading this, the chapter stays together in your brain. So what kind of rationalities? Um, now to describe one of the functions, he goes over at the beginning of this chapter so he describes torture techniques as a way to extort confession um, or to produce a truth that the justice system can hold out as proof that it's doing its job and it's being just and it's justified, uh, it, it, it's justified to exist. Now, as strange as this seems, um, we can see how that wouldn't work when you torture a confession out of somebody, right? A lot of things can happen. Uh, people that aren't guilty can confess, you can lie, uh, you can get really desperate and just say whatever, right? But it's a rationality that is alive and well in America's involvement as a torture state. Now, perhaps to get locations of terrorist groups, uh, we will torture all of these people, and if it works once, we get the truth out of somebody one time, we suddenly have a justification for torturing. So think of waterboarding, which was rebranded as uh, enhanced interrogation techniques, right? Now this is torture, psychological and physical. I mean, pe people shatter their collarbones, their arms, their legs um, from struggling so hard. Uh, waterboarding itself is calculated and measured now you wait a specific uh, amount of time or intervals uh, to build up dread uh, in the victim or you allow the victim to recover for a little bit and you use certain amounts of water you ask questions in in, in specific orders uh, in specific ways um, another function was what he called a juridico political function now don't be scared of these words once again they just they're they, they are what they sound like. So these are bodies of knowledge that mutually enforce one another. They interpret one another. Juridical is, sounds like judicial. Uh, political is political power. So torture was a way to reactivate and reestablish the political power of the sovereign or the monarch. Um, so spectators could visually see with their eyes the power of the sovereign or the monarch. Now this produced a problem over time. There is only so much people are willing to tolerate if they see something as unjust and unchecked. It brings people together in solidarity. So on page uh, 63, I think he says it most clearly, So he says, it's about in the middle of the page, right here. So he says, 
the people never felt closer to those who paid the penalty than in those rituals intended to show the horror of the crime and the invincibility of power. Never did, did the people feel more threatened, like them, by the legal violence exercised without moderation or restraint. So, um, a very contemporary example of this kind of spectacle that we can think about or is almost analogous to this is the police executions of black men. Now if you think of the cell phone videos as spectacular public executions that people believe are unjust and unchecked, then you get a social movement or you get solidarity and that can be dangerous to technologies of social control like the American police force. Okay, so that was a bit of a shorter chapter. I will see you once again for the next chapter. I'm Mike. See you around.